Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I now have two plasma cutters. This Cut 40D that I bought off eBay for about 90 bucks around a year ago or so, maybe a little more than a year ago. And I bought this for one purpose, and that was to embiggen or enlarge, depending on where you live, the hole in the firewall that the blower motor comes through on my CJ7 so I could put a more powerful blower motor in it. And honestly, it performed that function flawlessly. First try, beautiful hole. Just really, really thought it did a great job. Plus, it runs off 110 really nicely. It's not all that powerful, but for sheet metal, 8 inch, that kind of stuff, works beautifully. And I also have the machine, the Cut 50 plasma cutter, that Simder sent me for review. And despite the fact that this is a Cut 40 and the Simder is a Cut 50, that Simder machine is about four times more powerful than this. The bad news about the Simder, it will not run reliably on 110 for more than five to 10 seconds at a time. Even if I turn the amperage on the machine all the way down to 10, it blows my 20 amp 110 volt circuit in five to 10 seconds. It is not really viable on 110 volts. So, and they both have this miserable little PT31 torch. Now, some guys love these PT31 torches. They're small, they're easy to maneuver, the consumables are cheap, but I've got great big paws, and I just, I struggle with these things. They're always turning the wrong way. The, the handle, the, you know, the switch turns. I just don't like them. Plus, I want to convert this to, um, to pilot arc. So I have done two things. Actually, I've done more than two, but two are the main ones. I have bought an AG65 torch set. Now, this comes with the hose. It comes with the handle. And look at that beautiful handle. Does that fit my big hand better or not? Now, this is a Pilot Arc torch. It has the little tip that can take the standoff on it. So, it's meant for a Pilot Arc. And you can see it has the, the third wire coming down. That red one is, is the Pilot Arc. I bought that. And I've also ordered, and I haven't gotten it yet, I've ordered a P80 torch. This is meant for up to 60 or 65 amps, and the P80 is meant for 80. And what I want to do is I'm going to keep the all the hose and lead off of this one, and I'm going to put the PT6, or excuse me, the AG60 or 65 torch on this, and I'm going to fish another wire down here to hook up the um, the pilot arc, and then I'm just going to use these banana clips and male and female ends, and I'm going to put the connector here. Now, I've seen a number of people convert these machines to pilot arc. Some of them have done it really nice, and some are just so sketchy. I mean, I'm the master of sketch, but I got to tell you, some of it's a little too sketchy even for me. They just hook a wire right into the ground and then just run that wire on the outside of the torch and then take the end of the other wire, strip it, and just wrap it around here and then force this back on and yeah, I ain't doing that. I'm going to use this torch, I'm going to fish a wire all the way through and I'm going to put a connector on here and then I'm going to take this lead that already has the wire in it and I'm going to put the P80 torch on it and put that on the cinder, and that'll be a video for another time. But first things first, let's get this apart, and let's get the connection in it for the pilot arc on the front of the machine. Okay, first thing to do, let's get the cover off of this. Well, that's kind of jam-packed full of stuff, isn't it? I really wasn't expecting to see it jam that packed full. Whole bunch of MOSFETs, cooling for the MOSFETs. More MOSFETs over here. That is really packed full of stuff. Huh, kind of surprised. So what I need to do is I need to take... I need to pop a hole right about here, I'm thinking. And I need to just put, come off the back of this, I don't know if you can see it, you can see it, 
I'm going to come off the back of here and just put a wire to that female banana plug back through that hole where I'm going to punch. I'll probably get this little circuit board out of the way first so I have some room to work. Okay, so I actually found some 10 gauge crimp connectors and a chunk of 10 gauge wire and I'm going to make the piece inside out of this. I don't really think 10 gauge matters that much since the rest is going to be 14 and I don't really think it's going to carry much of a heavy load because I'm not going to keep the pilot arc long for on, on for long but I just happen to have these connector sizes so I use them. Okay, I got it in place. Let me bring you in here and show it to you. Just make sure you can see it. Then I'm going to put that little circuit board back on. Let me zoom down here if I can. And there you have it right there. I went from here to here with that little loop of 10 gauge wire and those 10 gauge crimp connectors. And that's all I need to do. That part is done. The front face of the machine now has my little connector on it. Now all I have to do is I just put the cover back on or put that little circuit board back in and put that cover back on. That little circuit board and its little jumper wire went, went there and there. So I'm going to put that back on, put the cover back on. Then I got to fish a wire through the entire length of that, of that um, outer cover and we're going to do that next. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this craptastic little PT31 torch and I'm going to put the AG60 torch off of that other set that I've got on it and I'm going to fish myself a 14 gauge wire all the way through here and I'm going to use this stainless steel safety bailing wire to do it. So let's get that done. So I went in the hunt for the wire because I carried it off and lost it. I found it and I had a muffin and coffee break while I was at it. Um, here is the new torch I bought that I'm going to steal the, the handle off of. And you can see their pilot arc wire. I figured that was probably 14 gauge and um, I got some 14 gauge and it might be a tiny bit, a tiny bit fatter, but also I highly suspect that since we know the origin of this torch is China, this wire is probably an aluminum wire that's kind of copper washed. So um, this is better because this is solid stranded copper wire. And again, you don't keep this lit for long. So I am now going to finish my muffin and coffee and then I'm just going to pull this wire through. Okay, so here's the new torch on the old hose lead, whatever you want to call it. I just soldered that on because I was just lazy. Um, I had to swap switches. It's mostly back together. The trigger goes here and there's a spring of a thing which I actually didn't lose. It goes in there. So I want to see if I can't get all of this back together. Okay, that was actually far easier than I thought it was going to be. That was easier than getting that little bitty nut back on inside the machine. Anyway, it's all back together. I did take it back apart one more time because I wanted my wrap up inside there. In my other end, I now have enough wire to put my banana plug on for my pilot torch, which I'm going to do next. And then we're going to get it up here and see if it works, doesn't work, or just blows up and I just buy another one. Anyway, be right back. Okay, so there it is. There is my um, pilot arc wire. I'm just going to plug it in right there. And um, we're going to give this thing a go. You're going to be right there with me. I have not tried it yet. I plugged air into it. I've got the torch assembled all here. It actually worked out really nice. Don't really have any complaints about the way it looked or the way it worked. Got that knocked out of whack a little bit, but let's try it. Should have my safety glasses on, shouldn't I? And I don't. This is the one with the power switch on the bottom that I can never find. There it is. Okay, 
powered on okay. Make sure all the connectors are tight. Make sure that's on tight. Here we go. Remember this is a torch designed for a 60 amp machine on a ma connected to a machine that's 40 amps on 220 that's connected to right at the moment probably a 15 amp 110 circuit. So if it sputters a little bit you can probably understand. So I'm going to get a piece of metal up here. I know this isn't my normal metal cutting area but right now that's covered with shit and I have no way to mount the camera over there yet so I'm just going to hook a chunk of metal right here. Let me um, tip the camera around. Let's see if this works. Let's get the hose away from it if we can. I should probably have some iPro. Ah! Where's the welding hood? There's the welding hood. Alright, let's see if this still works as a plasma cutter. Because who knows, after what I just did to it, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. So I'm just going to, this has the, this won't even let the tip come in contact. So I'm just going to put it right there and... Okay, well it cut that without a problem once I got down to where I was in contact with it. This may not have been the best setup for this. This machine on 110 just doesn't have the power to maintain an arc length that long. It really does need to be in contact. Whether that would let you help you establish an arc on a piece of painted metal, I don't know. But we're obviously not going to be running that standoff on it. It holds it too far away. Would it work better on 220? Oh hell yeah it would. But this is the machine I want to run on 110 because my other machine won't run on 110 hardly at all. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to paint this and I'm going to then come back and see if it will start on something painted. Let's try that. I've got a piece of metal. I didn't have any sacrificial piece of metal. It was already painted and rusty. So um, I put Two coats, really heavy coats, so heavy that I had to give it two days to dry, of Rust-Oleum enamel on this piece of metal. We're going to try that first on 110 volts with the new Pilot Arc torch. And um, I'm hoping that's going to work just like right like that with the Pilot Arc. I guarantee you this machine would not have started on this metal through the paint. I've used this enough to already know that it wouldn't start. If it does, I'm going to consider this whole thing a major success because while I do have 220 out here to use and I am going to test it on that with this standoff, I am going to test it on that before this video is over. Anyway, let's test this now. I'm going to test it on 120. I've got the compressor charged up but turned off. And this is a 110 volt 20 amp circuit. And I have a fairly short run to the box and nothing else but these LED lights, which don't pull much or plugged into it. Let's see if it'll start and cut.
And as you see, we have Pilot Arc. Yes, Pilot Arc. Let's see if it'll start on this paint. Look at that. Okay, that is a major success for We still have pilot arc action. We do still have pilot arc action. Let's see if it'll cut this. Okay, we are now plugged into the 30 amp, 220 volt circuit. Let's see if it will, I'm gonna go back to my painted piece of metal. Let's see if it will maintain the arc with the standoff on it. Still have pilot arc? Doesn't sputter now, does it? Nope. Let's see if it will cut that. That cut right through that. That maintained the arc on 220 even with the standoff on it and I gotta tell you with this with this gun on here converted to pilot arc you can see back there's my pilot arc conversion wire on the front with this gun on here and this converted to pilot arc this little ninety dollar or ninety eight dollar whatever I paid for it on eBay plasma arc cutter is really capable it's capable on 110 volts, you know, without the standoff cutting through paint and rust. And it's capable on, extra capable on 220 with the little standoff on the front. And um, I'm really happy with that. I really think that worked out well. I'm going to do the Simder as well, but the Simder does not run on one, happily on 110. And this one does. So this was a big deal to me. So if you have one of these little cheap 110, cut 30, cut 40 machines and you can't run it on 220, this would be a really nice little conversion for you for only 25 bucks or so. So anyway, I hope this proved helpful to you guys. It certainly worked out well for me. Please like and subscribe. If you're not going to subscribe, please hit the like button. That is really helpful. And um, there's a super thanks button as well. If you have any questions, leave them below. And while this machine is no longer 90 or 98 bucks, I'll find the cheapest link to it I can and put it below. Or one similar. Anyway, thanks guys. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.